Hey everyone, when we teach how our challengers exploit low elo mistakes to easily carry the games we think are impossible to win, we usually focus on breaking down what we did and how we did it. The problem with this is you're often left wondering what the low elo player who just got blasted did wrong and how they could have prevented getting smurfed on by a challenger. So today we're going to look at one of my games in Plat 4 Gold 1 Area MMR. We'll be breaking down not only what I did to easily carry these games, but we're also going to test your knowledge to see if you know what they did wrong, then give you the answers. This guide should both help you stomp your lane opponent, while also fixing common mistakes you're probably making, but don't realize it. So let's get straight into it. At the start of the lane, I'm auto attacking one minion down and not looking to hit a Kali yet. Let's test your knowledge right away here. Why am I focusing one minion, and why am I not trying to hit a Kali? Alright, so for the first question, I'm focusing one minion because if I don't, they will all die at the same time, and I will need to use my W to get all three. My W is a long cooldown, and I don't want to waste it on CS, I wanted to use it to trade. For the second question, I ask this because a lot of low elo players don't know when they should auto attack in a ranger's melee matchup. In this situation, Akali has fleet, so if I auto her, she'll just heal it up. I want to wait for her to use the fleet first when she autos a minion. Also, I don't want to hit her until she walks up to about her melee minion line. If I auto her then, I won't take minion aggro from her ranged minions. Those are the important ones. You can easily kite around the melee minions until they drop aggro. Moving on, I'm going to grab the one CS that I focused down, and since Akali used her fleet, now I auto her, back up a bit, then use W in another auto to proc electrocute and grab the CS at the same time. So in a play like this, there were a few small things that made it better than what a normal low elo player would do. The most important thing was how I autoed her, then backed up for a second. This was for two reasons. Auto attacks have a cooldown based off your attack speed. If I auto her and stand there, she could use Q. So I'm backing off for just a second to get out of her Q range, then as it's coming up, I W in and have my next auto ready to use and proc electric Q. Anyways, after this, my W is on a pretty big cooldown, so all of my harass will be from auto attacks. Like I said before, I need her to walk up if I'm going to auto. If I just walk in and auto her, I'm going to eat range minion aggro. So I walk up and grab a last hit and immediately turn around and walk back as I'm spacing to stay out of her Q range. If we trade one of my autos for her Q, her minions will hit me and I lose the trade. But now I can see she's going to go for this last hit next, so look how I'm positioned. I'm out of her Q range, just waiting for her to walk up for it. When she goes in, I keep the same spacing as before and make sure to hit her with an auto. You might be wondering though, should I still be waiting for her to use fleet before harassing? This only applies at the very start of the lane because she has 100% health. If she uses fleet at 100%, she doesn't heal anything, so it's just a waste. After that point, you can ignore that concept. But moving on now, we're at a big point in the lane, do you know why? It's because I'm one minion from level 2. I always say in low elo, I win lane in the first 3 levels in 99% of the games. Low elo meaning platter below. Will this Akali be in the 1% of laners that respect level 2, or the 99%? Let's find out. As I'm focusing down this minion that will give me level 2, watch how my positioning changes. I'm not moving up too far to scare her off but I'm moving up far enough to be in range to go in when she goes for this last hit. Then as soon as I level up, I jump in, and since I'm positioned perfectly, my W lands, which is actually very important here. Just landing the chain won't be that much damage. I want the W damage as well. But I chain after W, get a huge chunk from her, then jump back. Alright, so this was a huge, huge mistake from the Akali. We're not going to ask you why that was a big mistake, it's obvious. She didn't respect my level 2, and took a huge chunk for it. But we're going to ask you something a bit more advanced. When it comes to Akali's overall game plan, why is this a big deal? You should know in melee versus ranged matchups, one of the most important parts is the goal of staying healthy until level 3. This is because at level 3, the melee champion can actually start trading back reliably with all of their abilities, or look for all-ins and kills. But if they are too weak before then, they won't be able to do anything. Also, at level 3 is when the wave starts to bounce back towards the ranged champion, so if the melee has low health, the range can freeze and make the melee overstay to try and get a good recall. Akali is doing a real bad job on the stay healthy part of this lane, so let's see how I punish it. With both of my abilities on cooldown, I just focus on my last hits and clear the wave. As the wave is crashing on her tower, watch my mouse. I know she's going to walk up for this last hit, so I click her very early when I'm still out of range. This makes it so the moment she's in range, I auto attack. This is a good tip for spacing. When you want to be auto attacking at max range, you just click when they're outside of it. Then, for those next few last hits, watch my mouse again. I'm doing the same thing in case she walks up for them, just right clicking when she's out of range. After pressuring those minions under tower, now it's time to go drop a ward. I didn't want to do it before this, or I would have missed that pressure window. She missed a lot of CS there, and I got a bit of poke. I dropped my ward here though, and not deeper in the river like I wanted, 
because I didn't want to lose a minion while doing it. Alright, if we look at the minion wave, what's going to happen with it if neither of us touch it? You see how both waves have the same amount of minions, but it's on her side of the lane? That means the even minion rule applies here. With these two conditions met, the wave will always slow push the other way. So the wave is slow pushing to me. She's out of potions, so this is very good. I just want to last hit at this point while looking for her ass when she walks up too far. When I say too far, think back to level 1 and where I said she needs to be for me to look for her ass. It's basically the same. Alright, this next part is important, no pads out here. Look at this cannon minion. In high elo, what will happen is, I see the cannon and know she's going for it. She knows that I want to pressure it. So she would walk up and act like she's going to auto attack it to try and bait an ability for me, but then use her E or Q instead. She has energy, so if she baits my ability and gets the CS with hers, I lose that exchange of resources. This is something you never see in low elo. Down here, they are predictable and they allow me to do this. I throw chain knowing she's going to walk up for the minion, and it lands. Then she uses E to get away, but doesn't get the cannon. So this concept is extremely important for any champion in mid, and it even applies to range versus range matchups. In a high elo lane, this kind of thinking is happening for almost every last hit for the entire laning phase. Anyways, back to the gameplay here, I see the low health cannon, and Akali is standing on top of it while walking up, so I use my W to grab it, but since I don't have chain, I just go back and back away. So we're going to test you again here. What was Akali's mistake in that last exchange? The main mistake was that she walked up to the wave for no reason. There were no low minions to hit, so it was just pointless. Odds are, it was just autopilot, which is one of the biggest problems in low elo. You should be thinking about everything you're doing, every click, every ability. But she made another mistake, which was using her W and not trading with it. Her W is one of her most important cooldowns. She should have used it here to hit me with Q, then go back in, then do it again, but she just backed off. Also, she's paying the price of wasting her E in the previous trade, so she doesn't have it here. This is when she's supposed to be trading. Remember what we talked about earlier? The wave will slowly push back to the ranged champion, and that's when the melee is level 3. This is where she can finally start winning trades using her minion wave and all three abilities. But because she didn't trade with me here, my game plan is to keep harassing when she walks up, but also try and start thinning this wave out. Thinning just means killing some minions to make the wave smaller. The reason I want to do this is, if the wave is too big, I won't be able to pressure her. The minions will do too much damage. So to thin, I'm going to do a lot of auto attacking and use my W effectively, which you'll see in a bit. I'm constantly auto attacking minions like I said, and when she walks up to her melee minion line like we talked about, I auto attack her, then immediately walk to the side and behind my wave. I know she's going to try and use E right as the minion dies. This isn't me reacting to her using her E, it's me knowing that she's going to do it already. But after she uses it and marks this minion, I'm positioned to punish in case she takes the mark and dashes in. I'm ready to use E the moment she does. She doesn't take it, but I still stay in this area in case she walks up for these minions. As expected, she does, so I land a chain and a few autos. I didn't use my W and Ignite because I didn't think I would have the damage to kill, and my lane isn't already such a great spot. The wave is in a perfect spot so there's no rush. Everything is happening exactly how I said it would earlier. I'm going to freeze, and she needs to decide either to overstay to try and get a good recall, or just recall now and lose a ton of experience. Either way, the lane is completely lost for her at this point. Since the lane is already lost, let's test you on what she should have done. If we go back to right before that last chunk she took, what should she have done from this point? She was already in a rough spot with no potions, but she had 80% health. She had one play she could have made from here. Pause here if you need more than the 5 seconds we give. Alright, so what she needed to do was use that big minion wave that she had, plus the one that is arriving soon, to quickly clear the next wave. She had all of her abilities up, and she will hit level 4 first. So she did what I talked about earlier and baited out my chain when she walked up for these two minions, I would have no kill pressure and she could use her Q and W to quickly kill the next wave while my chain is on cooldown. Her wave would be so big I wouldn't be able to freeze it or fight her, but she got chained and chunked and wasted her W for nothing on top of it so the lane is done. Anyways, we're going to see how I punish this next as I'm doing the same things before, constantly auto attacking and use my W to harass her plus hit a lot of the minions at the same time. This was the effective use of W that I was talking about earlier to thin the wave. Now I just need to land a chain or wait for my W cooldown so I can finish her off but I'm playing patient and still thinning the wave. I go for the chain here as she walks up for this minion, but she uses E to avoid it. I figure she's going to try and recall now and walk up to stop her, but she's under tower so I walk away. Then luckily for me, she walks back into vision and is overstaying to try and get a good recall. This will never work, as she should have recalled right there and took the loss. Now she's going to die and lose the wave. Now I just need to wait for her to get greedy for last hit. 
I know she won't be able to give up the cannon, but I want to make sure she doesn't have her E for it. So if you see my positioning, I'm pressuring her, still trying to bait it out, and it works. Now this next CS is getting low, so I wait for her to walk up for it, W to one side of her to force her movement down, which makes my chain easy to land and gets me the kill. Alright guys, so with the additional breakdown of what Akali should have done, you should have learned a lot more than usual. Laning phase has a ton of micro decisions and mechanics in it, and will take a lot of practice to master, but if you get good, you'll climb fast. By the way, you should know where our guides come from. Our hyper improvement platform skill capped is the number one place to actually start improving at League of Legends. You can input your rank before signing up to see where we'll think you'll climb to. Then, if you don't hit that rank while actively using skill cap, you can claim a full refund. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. We offer this because our services really do work. And if it doesn't, then you shouldn't pay for it. Check us out right after this. But that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.